hey guys, look what I got. That's right, I got the Arrows Bigfoot, and this is the ready to fly version, so it comes with a radio, battery, charger, everything you need inside the box. In this video, we're gonna unbox it, we're gonna take a look at all the parts and pieces, and then at the end, we're gonna wrap things up with our pros and cons. Coming up next, we're gonna see what's going on inside the box. All right, this is what everything inside the package looks like. Got the hardware down there in the, the left-hand corner to assemble this, and it looks like a very basic, very nice assembly. The manual is pretty straightforward. Here is the ready-to-fly portion of the kit. It also comes in plug-and-play at Hobby Zone. Check the link in the description, and that includes the ready-to-fly stuff. Includes the charger right there in the middle, and the battery and the radio itself. We're gonna take a closer look at the radio here a little bit later in the video, but for now, this is the landing gear. It looks, these are very nice, uh, very large wheels anyway, and they're, they're a little hard, so I think I'm gonna recommend folks maiden theirs on the grass. That's probably what I'm gonna do with mine. And right back there, we've got the vertical stabilizer with the rudder attached. Got the fuselage. We're looking at the underside of the fuselage. So have a good look now. We'll probably be looking at the sides and the top most for the rest of the video once it's assembled. So get a good look now. The decals have been applied really, really well. Just like all the arrows hobby stuff. I'm really impressed with every single arrows RC that I've had so far. So. With all that being said, next thing you see will be this fully assembled. This is what it looks like, guys, all put together. It's got flaps, it's got lights everywhere. It, it was a relatively straightforward assembly. And yeah, coming up next, we're gonna do a little tour around this thing. Okay, so here is a little look at this plane. We're gonna do some control surfaces tests here shortly, but I at least wanted to show you guys what this looks like. It is a beautiful plane. It's got lights everywhere. Obviously it's got flaps and it's set up with nice range on the flaps. Very cool. I'll probably be landing this with half flaps. That's more my style. I like to land with a little more speed, but you stall fans out there, you can do that. You can do that. All right, I'm gonna set this up. That is the minute timer on the radio once it's bound up. So every minute it does that beeping. That way it makes it so you know where you're at in your, in your flight because a lot of times you'll be flying and you'll lose orientation or lose track of time because it's so fun. And that's a nice little reminder there for you. All right, when we come back, control surface and prop motor up. Okay, so here are the control surfaces in action. Lots and lots of throw. Now here are the flaps. Very cool. Coming up next, we are gonna prop this thing up. We're gonna make it spin. Now we're gonna let this thing rip. This thing has some power. I like it. All right, when we come back, we are gonna show this in the dark. Look at these lights, guys. Here's a good look in the dark on a queen size bed, showing the plane's presence, cause it's got nice presence, and the light kit in action. My goodness, lots of light. All right, guys, here's a look at the ready to fly radio. And it is fairly basic, except for we've got a flap switch up here. So if it's farther forward, that was down flaps. Now it's half flaps, and this is full flaps. And over here, we've got a mode button where if it's back here, it will self correct. It'll make the wings fly level. And if you have enough throttle, it'll fly flat. 
because it will do some elevator inputs to help try and keep it uh, fly stable as well as aileron and I believe some rudder too possibly so there we go on that and then if you have that forward it will just help make the turbulence and wind and things like that smooth out a little bit so this is a really power packed little kit but it's basic for the newer flyer so that is awesome and let's see what else we got here so when you turn this on you turn it on first and then you plug in the battery and it should come already bound so the plane connects to the radio or it's already connected to the radio so all you have to do is turn the power on in the right sequence and you will be able to fly coming up next we are going to do our pros and cons as far as the pros go this is a ready to fly kit with everything you need inside the box it has two different flight modes one for the beginner and one for the advanced flyer it has plenty of power on 3s I've flown enough of these planes to know on the bench I can get a pretty darn good feel. This should have plenty of power, which is nice. It also has a really nice throttle response on the radio for a beginner. I flew the FMS Ranger recently and had a kind of a similar feel, and I think that will translate well to the beginner, which is awesome. This also has a really nice set of all-terrain tundra tires that will work well for, for multiple surfaces, except for pavement. I'm not sure I would recommend pavement for it. It also has an excellent set of lights. This light kit is really nice, really bright, really functional. This plane has a really great presence, so that is awesome. And really the only con is the tires seem really hard, so Again, it's a pro anacon because with tires like this, you can fly tons of different surfaces carefree. You're not going to tear these up like foam tires, things like that, on gravel and other kind of rough surfaces. But if you've got really nice, smooth pavement, you're going to want to fly it on grass over pavement. And you may be fine on pavement too. I just have flown enough of these to have a pretty good handle that. I don't like flying them off pavement. So that is it as far as the cons go. And that's it for the video, guys. Like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you for watching. And GB Linden, out.